let's move on to the third session where we'll discuss critical skills needed in the 21st century can we have the av please 21st century ki tez raftar aur competitive economy ka maujooda daur survival of fittest ke sath hi jack of all trades ka bhi hai करियर में आगे बढ़ने के लिए अब किसी एक स्किल में स्पेशलाइजेशन काफी नहीं है बल्कि क्रिटिकल स्किल्स में महारत रखना या मल्टी टैलेंटेड होना जरूरी है ऐसे में भविष्य के मद्देनजर उन स्किल्स की डिमांड को जानने और समझने के साथ ही करंट जेनरेशन को तैयार करना बेहद जरूरी हो जाता है I request my panelists to please come on stage. First, we have Dr. Sunil Reddy Kundru, Assistant Professor, IT and Computational Systems, and Chairperson, Information and Instructional Technology. I am Amrishal. Welcome, sir. Then we have Professor R S Bawa, Advisor to Honorable Chancellor, Chandigarh University. applause for everyone over here for yourself as well and i really appreciate your support because that is what makes it interesting thank you so here we are going to talk about the critical skills that are needed in the 21st century sir this time i will not start uh, with any sort of assumptions i would rather give you the floor and ask you what sort of critical skills you feel are central to success are or going to be really critical right uh, so my answer will be assuming that we are discussing this because of arrival of generative ai Absolutely. and so in that context uh, what people are talking about right now is what is called as collaborative intelligence okay right where humans and machines have to work together uh, in collaboration to arrive at a decision in decision making uh, specifically uh, you know taking that term so for doing collaborative intelligence the critical skill you would require in a very contrasting way is or in in a very ironic way is the foundational knowledge in any subject right so i'll give an example like you know why foundational knowledge is important when we deal with or work with machines right so you, you would remember you know playing with calculators as a child in a school level it's easy to do 4 into 4 or 3 into 5 but the moment you start doing percentages there is an order in which you have to press the buttons right you press the buttons in the wrong way you still get the answer and unless you have foundational understanding of what percentages is what a percentage is and how percentages work you would not know whether the machine is giving you the right answer or the wrong answer right many esteemed panelists before me spoke about bias in ai right the critical aspect in working with ai is recognizing when it is biased and when it is working for you correctly right but that bias is created by the humans right the one who bias is working is with it bias is created by feeding a wrong data right or insufficient data because we don't have all the data when we train ai we are training it on the past data how for example let us say i am training an ai to do loan underwriting should i give a, a customer loan or not how am i deciding that based on various characteristics of the customers and people with similar characteristics in the past have they paid or not paid right so now ai when it when a new customer arrives we give the same data to ai now the ai does not know the changing context it only is basically acting on the context we gave it to while we are training it right so now as a if i know the foundational understanding of how loan underwriting works i am in a better position to decide whether ai is biased or not and that is what collaborative collaborative intelligence is 
Okay. We are not completely delegating decision making to AI. Instead, we are saying, okay, you do the heavy lifting for me, right? You help me scale my operations. But when it when you say no, I am going to check once again. Or when you say yes, I am going to check once again. It depends on the cost, right? If yes is more costly, a false positive is more costly. I'll check positive outcomes. If false negative is more costly, I'll check you know uh, negative outcomes, right? So to understand this, you need to develop foundational knowledge right from mathematics, statistics, English, everything. In every subject you're learning in school, you have to develop strong foundations to be able to work as a manager alongside AI. That's my take on uh, this topic. Perfect. Uh, Professor Baba, just to build on what uh, Dr. Sunil Reddy just said, what sort of critical skills are we talking about? And uh, how would you ensure that the ecosystem that exists support th that particular skill set? Actually, you know, uh, what I think is that technology uh, is here to stay. Mm -hmm. And what is existing here is bound to change. The future is going to be different, as already discussed, AI as we are discussing. But I have a very strong feeling that all these machines and uh, AI-based tools, mm -hmm. they are based on the information that is fed to them. Chat GPT was being discussed. All these are LLM-based models. Whatever you feed, one, getting more feed will give you better results. But then the challenge for the new generation will be to find applications where LLM will not go wrong, it can guide a robot or robotics or all kind of machines. Now, machine learning is something different. To my mind, a student has to be trained to find applications in real life, not only mechanical, not only industrial, but for day-to-day -day life also. And I use two words normally. We have to enable these students and empower these students. Enable these students to learn anything that they want in future. And empower these students what is available right at the moment. I also very strongly believe that when we talk about future and talk about thinking out of the box, unless we go inside the box, it's not possible to think out of the box. So, Future but I guess all of us future... are in the box because we all think like the majority of us think like that. Unless we know what is inside the box, how can you think about what you have to think about outside the box? Now, the student of future will have to find out how to use existing technology and come out with new technologies. Hmm. What challenges are in future? Like, for example, we have been talking about cloud computing. Now we'll have to think about edge computing. Cloud computing may not be as useful as it is for distant cloud. For, for example, auto-driven cars, cloud computing is not going to be useful. You come out with edge computing. Mm -hmm. You are talking about virtual reality. You are talking about augmented reality. You will have to find ways to combine these technologies. So the existing situation will have to be understood and then find ways to combine existing technologies. The new areas will keep on emerging. Nothing is going to be permanent. AI as per se, for example. Mm -hmm. AI for agriculture is, has a different meaning. AI for a law has a different meaning. But AI as such is what you feed and how you program the machine or the system to keep on learning. But the learning will depend on how much you have fed and learning will depend on how much you are exposing that machine to. That is so, what I So, uh, Dr. Anupam Sobhdi, I would just build on uh, what Professor Baba just said. The point that he made is humans need to keep reinventing. How challenging is that? Because when we talk about technology, we are also talking about a lot of money. Where is that money going to come from? Is it going to be a sustainable model? That would be the first question that would come to at least my mind. And I'm sure many would say, from where are you going to get the money, especially uh, what we have seen in the last few years? So I think 
uh, both of you have very nicely set up the context, right? So I think... No, you have to hold your mic okay. closer. So both of you have very nicely set up the context. And I think, you know, what you said about being able to translate technology into applications more and more, that is where I think the challenge or the barrier would come. So like you said, for example, where will the money come from? Can you now think of multiple dimensions together and that interdisciplinarity can you inculcate in the students of tomorrow? Hmm. So, and I feel that the barrier to that will be lower and lower because of the presence of AI. Because today, if I'm a computer scientist and I want to know more about business, I already have ChatGPT4, which knows you know, a decent amount of business. So I think the curiosity gap would really be amplified in the skills of the future. Uh, really? Just a second, because you have made a very important point, and I can see a lot of youngsters over here. So how many of you use chat GPT? Uh, to be honest, I don't. So how many of you use chat GPT? Can you please raise your hands? Because here we are talking about curiosity. Also, the curiosity factor seems to be really high over here, in this room at least. So do you really, uh, like the point that you were making, at least the room doesn't agree to that. So the curiosity part in this room seems to be pretty high. No, in fact, I'm saying that because curiosity here is high, now instead of people thinking about, let's say, how to solve this coding problem, huh. might be thinking about how to make my city more livable, huh. which is a bigger challenge, right? But they will use the creativity and the knowledge of AI to be able to cater to that as well. So let me just do one exercise. Uh, how many people raise their hand? When I asked uh, whether you use chat GPT, please, can you raise your hands again? So I'm going to walk up to you and I'm going to ask you guys, what do you use it for? Please, it for Dr. Yangar, I'm not going to give you the floor because you have already spoken a lot. So, sir, what do you use it for? Please tell me. Uh, almost for everything. As in, you ask uh, yourself, do you ask chat GPT where to buy bed sheet from or where to buy food from? Really? No, that, that's not neither because that I know I have many other applications. But you can use ChatGPT for more serious things. Like? Like you are looking for some research you can find out quickly, which you can otherwise impossible to do it, you know, in 10, 15 days. Okay, so let me ask uh, the youngsters over here, how many of you raised your arm? Please, please, please raise your hand. So what do you use it for? Tell me. I even explain my picture to the AI oh, wow. and I get captions, po poetic okay. captions for Instagram. Okay, so why did you ask ChatGPT? Couldn't you come up uh, with some interesting caption for yourself or you wanted it to be, you wanted it to go viral and you just thought that I should follow up? At like si sometimes I know thodi si shairi. Oh wow. Okay. So Can you do some shairi over here right now <laughs> without the help of chat GPT? <laughs> come on, please. I can only copy paste. <laughs> copy paste. See, this is what is chat GPT doing? Who else was? Uh, yeah. So what do you use it for? Like for the general questions, jinka answer nahi milta, kabhi... Jaise ki, life itni berang kyun hai? Girlfriend kaise mile? Haan, aise... Poochha hai, girlfriend kaise mile? Nahi, nahi, aise questions nahi. Like jaise education related, and shairies bhi thodi bhot. Kaisi shairi? Khushi wali, sad wali, dosti wali? Theme, aap dal do koi bhi, or shairies aaj. Aap konsi use karte ho? Itna, itna guarded kyo? Jab yeh bata diya, chat GPT use karte ho, tab to sabko pata chali hai. Uh... मैं ज़्यादातर सोशल लिखता हूँ। तो वैसी। ओके। What do you use Chat GPT for? One second, I'm coming to you. Tell me. I'm running a digital marketing company, so I use Chat Chat GPT in many ways for SEO, for website content, taking idea from how to make a website creative and everything. Chat GPT के बाद हर चीज़ का। Everything बोले तो personal में भी? हर सब कुछ। Personal में क्या? आप पूछ लो कुछ भी पूछ लो आप बोलो आपने क्या क्या पूछा आप लोग ऐसा पहले बोलते चैट जीपीटी यूज किया है मैंने पूछा गर्फन कैसे बनाऊं उसने बता दिया क्या था चैट जीपीटी का जवाब बता दो उसने बोला कि आप पार्क में घूमिए मॉल में जाइए आप क्लब्स में जाइए तो उसने बता दिया ना तो वहाँ पे जाइए � for what? For content creation. Okay, just for content creation or to make ma'am happy as well? Yeah, sometimes. So what do you ask Chad GPT? You know, uh, how to, like, uh, what kind of gift I should give to my wife. So what was the response? An N number of responses. Yeah, so, so what, do, uh, did you follow Chad GPT? Yeah. Did you take that advice seriously? Yeah, sometimes. Not was she happy post that? 
Yeah. He he just take advice. He never implements them. <laughs> you are lying. You are lying. You are not following Chat GPT, and it will be. It, it, you are not following Chat GPT, and it is going to be very very annoyed with you, sir. You can't just use it for your advantage. So, sir, I did this survey so that we know where we actually stand. So, so, are you surprised by the response? Not really. Actually, uh, see, I'll go back to my. You know, I really uh, liked how to make a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, see, that's all all interesting answers. But I'll point out to the marketing, uh, you know, the entrepreneur there. Mm. See, he understands foundation. He has some foundation understanding about what it can actually do, mm -hmm. right? And he is actually putting it to the best use. Of course, you know, he also uses it for his personal questions and answers, but no, that's what I mean when I say foundational understanding. You should know what SEO is first. And then you go to chat GPT and ask the right question. We call this prompt engineering, right? So unless you understand the problem fundamentally, you can't create the good a good prompt, right? Even if you want to ask, what is the... My question is that the answer girlfriend wala, wo main ye, actually I'm asking you these questions because somebody who's watching you sitting at home, they should also understand what technology is doing and how technology is being fed with all this information. What's right. getting See, into even this? Even in that, you know, if you want to know what kind of gift you want to give your girlfriend, it's important to know the right prompt, right? <laughs> how do you really work with the computer and ask it the right question? So what would be the right prompt? So I think the person has to give more context to it. See, I'm, I'm you know, certain age and, you know, I come from certain culture. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend has this kind of taste. Now, I have only one more day to buy a gift. I really have not thought about it uh, through. Why don't you help me? And you'll be amazed at how good ChatGPT will respond if you give it the right context. Right? So, if you ask simply what is the best gift to give my girlfriend, you can as well put it to Google. Google will give you better answers than ChatGPT. Yes, sir. You want to build on it? I'll give you an example. Okay. I'll give you an example. You see, uh, whatever is fed, that mm -hmm. means, for example, we yeah, talk, yeah. we ask so many questions to Google. Where from Google gets those answers? It has access to all that data. So it's basically whatever data you feel. That's why these are called LLM. These are large language models and based on information, whatever you feed. Chat GPT is based on that. For example, you ask a, through any machine, any AI, tell us the distance between Earth and Sun. Do you think it's going to calculate? No. It's going to find out from different sources where it is already available. It will be found by some scientists. It will be found by some other method. But AI will simply find it out. For example, a law I was talking about, it's very interesting. You know, when a case is to be prepared by a, an advocate, they go through thousands of files, they will have to look at that. But now AI is going to help them. They will have to give, feed some keywords. Now, the question is, what keywords have to be fed? Like I was saying, I was reading uh, Scientific American recently. Uh, they tried to uh, ask a, a machine, uh, a robo as we call it, uh, to find out certain items from the refrigerator and prepare some dish. It, they had to struggle for it because the information is not already available there. So you will have to give this information in fragments. First, you go to the refrigerator. Then you search for this item. Then you do this to this. For example, if you don't say, cut it or peel it or whatever, mm -hmm. it will not be able to do. So the point that I'm making is, Chat GPT, uh, those of you who are very keen to use, and I'm sure experts are sitting here. I'm not an expert in that area. Let's not use it in raw form. It can put you in a lot of trouble. Because it depends on what kind of keywords you are putting and what kind of information that particular tool is going to generate. And sometimes it can go awfully wrong. And uh, like, you know, in three years, it can, be, it can put you in a lot of trouble. So that's my say. And, 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 you know, I believe that we should not overemphasize on any kind of technology. Absolutely. Technology is deepening in our education system. It's welcome. But let's not become slaves to technology. That was precisely Technology the has to be our slave. Yeah. I should use technology judiciously. Students should be made to use judiciously. Otherwise, what is happening is that the original thinking will stop coming up. 
Now, what I will do is you give an assignment. Why do we give assignments to the child? Why do we want them to write different... Because you want to stimulate the yes. thinking process. O original thinking. Exactly. So, if they will use AI, they will ask, okay, if, like you were saying, write some codes, write some software. And, if and, it and, is, you'll be written by you, a machine. If they aren't going to use the brain, it is going to be an answer which would be uniform and hundreds of uh, kids are going to come up with the same answer. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. that's where the uh, issue is. Dr. Sopti, so now you have seen how Chad GPT has been helping people or not helping people, not delivering what people are looking for. So, the key word here is to know and feed the right information to get maximum out of technology. And that is probably the critical skill that one needs. Though, coming to the point point about the girlfriend, I would strongly recommend that go by emotions, don't go by chat GPT. We women are pretty complex. So if you know us, you know how we behave in different situations, you know what we like, what we don't like. So don't go by chat GPT because it might suggest to you something that we don't like and it is going to backfire big time for you. So please don't use it for emotional stuff. Yeah, please. Yeah, but you know, thank you for doing that survey. And I'm very happy to note that many people have been using it in a direction, uh, you know, which Professor Sudarshan was also saying, to give you wings. And I mean, somebody who is a digital marketing expert can now dive into SEO, for yeah. which they may, maybe had to hire a professional who was very costly, uh, mm. you know, in the past. And some people are also thinking about uh, you know, doing it for many more things. And by the way, so there is slight trivialization of chat GPT as well. It not only looks at the information that is already available, uh, AI now has also invented new molecules. It has also invented new materials that were never seen before, right? So AI, I think, is going to be a force which is going to be helping us in many ways, but we need to set our critical thinking and we need to set our value systems appropriately. For example, if you think the most important thing in your life right now is a girlfriend, then probably the There's nothing wrong with that. There is a stage in life when you really Absolutely. want to get into a relationship. So, nothing... One, yeah, one yeah. small yeah. thing I want to say, and I will not speak after that. Sure, sir. You see, use technology to find solutions, but verifiable solutions. I tell you what the technology is going to create problems, AI so, sir, basically technology, you are saying Chad is GPT that the solution will you? not be verifiable. Once, they should also, the technology should help you verify the solution, that whether it is correct or it is wrong. So basically you are extent? saying that chat GPT cannot get you a long-term girlfriend. For that you need to invest your emotions and your hard work. Please, Dr. Softi, you wanted to, like I interrupted you, so you can finish. No, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I think uh, long-term solutions Ji. and making sure that we are using AI responsibly, technology responsibly, as you know, Professor Sudarshan was also saying, you can use Uber to make that fair 3.5x, but you can also make it to make life easy for so many people. So I think if we encode things in the right way, it's going to be a power that's going to take us a long way. Mm -hmm. I also have a question, just on a very serious side. Now that we are talking about technology, uh, we get to hear about suicides and the number is just going up. Why can't we use technology to give people empathy? Like initially I was, I, I believe that emotions and technology, they don't go together, but when it is about data and it is about putting the information in, then why not use it for social cause? I yeah, so Dr. Sobti, and then I'll give you the floor. I yeah. think there's a bigger question. Yeah. There's a bigger question. The bigger question is, is the modern technology inclusive? Are you able to make technology available to everyone? in our great country, in our diverse country. That's a bigger question. Empathy will come automatically. But the question is, technology is not being made available to all sections of the society. So I, all I, young I completely students agree with you, until country. unless it is available to everyone, how you are going to incorporate it, uh, incorporate it in your day-to-day -day life. But if there is an option available, and especially about this trend of growing number of suicides, and especially among young people, students, you get to hear, you get to read a lot of such cases where people just give up. How about using technology? And have there been trends or practices in the past to address that particular problem? Because here we are talking about edutech. And then when you are talking about education, you are talking about a certain age group as well. No, I think these are exactly the kind of questions that AI will help foster answers to. I mean, we, AI will enable us to get faster answers too. 
So, for example, in India, the mental, mental health counseling situation is quite dire, not just because there is no awareness, but also because there are no numbers, right? So if possibly you could get the top mental health researcher or the top mental health counselor to be replicated in thousands using an AI, it may not be as good as the original counselor, but it could still help a lot of people, right? So I think AI is going to be that multiplicative force that's going to solve a lot of these problems. Also because, you know, today a 12th class student could be asking this question and actually come up with a solution because they will have wings in terms of technology. They will have wings in terms of, you know, the kind of knowledge that we've already produced as, an, as a generation. Sure. Dr. Reddy. Yeah. No, I, can, I think I have a similar take uh, on the same, same question. Uh, see, I don't think AI can do anything which we can't do. If we are not able to stop or reduce the suicide rate, we can't train AI to do the same. What AI does is what we do, it does the same but at a very high scale. Right? So since, first of all, we have to figure out, oh, for, let me give you a very interesting snippet. The first chatbot created, it was created in 1960s, it's called Eliza. It is actually a counselor. Right? It's a, uh, it, it kind of will allows you to get into a session with a psychologist, right? a psychiatrist or whatever we call them. So people have attempted at this and uh, people realize that unless we really have knowledge on the core subject, like how we can counsel somebody to you know, overcome their thoughts of you know, suicidal tendencies, we can't train AI to do that. And as you rightly said, it's a very interesting thing. You said, why can't we train empathy to AI? Uh, people are trying, right? People are trying to you know, uh, figure out semantics through kind of you know, large language modeling and train the machines to feel, or at least you know, take a tone which emulates a feeling, right? So that may be the first step, and then maybe slowly we will, it can't empathize, but it can emulate human empathy. Can machines be drilled with emotions? Dr. Younger, if, if I may ask you, just a second, yeah. Because it is about emotions, you know, so. Um, definitely yes, to a very large extent. A quick example is, um, when I got married, as everyone does, mm -hmm. we fought a lot, me and my wife, yeah. and that continued till date. Oh. We tried everything, including uh, you know taking deep breaths and then calming oneself. We, we both a short tempered, as simple as that, like any other uh, uh, couple who gets married uh, uh, newly. But then, but then, what we recently did was we sat in front of Chat GPT. I typed, she typed. I typed, she typed. I fought with ChatGPT saying this, no, this, was, this is the problem, and this is our argument, this is my argument, who is right? And ChatGPT asks for the next step, give me more information, what's your personality type? Uh, why, why, why wouldn't you put the same thing politely? Was the answer there? And then that's absolutely right. Same thing told politely probably would not lead to a fight. Now, my emotion, my wife's emotion charged up, because we all are hormonal, Right? We were, uh, Chat GPT was completely emotionless and hence had the emotion to instruct us to be polite. Oh, wow. so sometimes being emotionless is also another emotion. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. I wanted to tell you my experience uh, on Basant Panchmi. Yeah. My sister told that she wanted a very unique uh, greeting card because it's not uh, everything is going so much on the WhatsApp. Then I said, ki, okay, let me try on AI. I don't know. 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 I don't I don't know. 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 I don't I don't know. I don't I don't I came up, I sent her, she said ki, make the yellow colors slightly less and the green also softened there. I gave the second command and see a wonderful card came and it was liked by, uh, by everyone on the groups and it became a viral on everyone. It was a unique thing. See, this is how I, how I express my emotions, sentiments, people praying to Goddess. Uh, Saraswati and see the kites flying, prosperity and the soft, soft sunlight. See, see that this is this is what has come up. Mm -hmm. so this is how we express our emotions and sentiments. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful card, and I must say that AI has done a fantastic job. Thank you so much, sir, for giving your insights for this interesting uh, discussion, and thank you to all of you for being so honest and truthful about your personal life. I really appreciate that. Huge round of applause for yourself, for no one else but yourself. Thank you so much. I really like this honesty. Thank you so much. First, we have Dr. Sunil Reddy Kundru, Assistant Professor, IT and Computational Systems and Chairperson, Information and Instructional Technology. I am Ambassador. I just want to know that you also have 